Okay, so let's start with our main tower. So I'm just going to go into our building geometry and select tower floor. And let's create a new mesh network. There we go. Let's just rename this while we're here to mesh floor tower 01. Even though we have fixed the pivot, we can see that the mesh network has placed the center of the new repro mesh at the center of the world. There are many ways to fix this. The quickest way is to add a transform node. So we'll just do that here, add a transform node, and change its position to 0.5. There we go. And let's use 0.6 and 6. That's 6 and 6. And there we go. We're in the middle of our scene. And we're just going to switch the distribute node switch the number of points to 16, zero out the X, and let's make the Y value 15. Great. To taper the tower, make the linear scale in X and Z minus 0 0.5. Oops, we have forgotten to create some antennas for our tower. This is quickly fixed. Let's just hide our mesh using control H and let's create a new polygon cylinder. So we'll go into our polygon shelf and create cylinder. Just going to go into here into my poly cylinder one attribute and change my radius to 0 0.05 and my height three and subdivision on my axis 12. Just switch to a wireframe view, right click and select vertex. I'm going to select all the bottom vertices, making sure I have my grid snap on, press the W key and move that to the base. Switch back to object mode. I'm going to duplicate this using control D twice. There we go. And move one of these cylinders two to the right, and another one, back one. I'm going to shift select these three objects in the outliner, and then in the mesh menu, I'm going to select combine. Maya does have a good Boolean tool set, but for what we need, combining these cylinders into one object is great. Switch back into vertex mode, and I'm going to select the top vertices, there we go, and move them up two points. Maybe just move this one back down one. Switch back to object mode. Assign existing material at tower floor Lambert. That'll do. There we go. Just need to delete the history of this object because we have these P cylinder three, two, and one objects here, and that can sometimes get in the way. So edit, delete by type history, and they're gone. So there'll be no issues. And we're just going to rename this object. Tower 01 and Tenna. Let's show our Mash 4 Tower Repro Mesh again. There it is. And that's Shift H. I'm just going to rename this Mash 4 Tower. Switch my viewport back to solid with textures by pressing 6. Great. Zoom out. And I'm going to select my, I'm going to close this and select my Mash Tower. Move over to my repro node and set my tower back over again, back to my repro node and add selected objects. Okay, just going to hide control H. To see the antenna object, I'm going to need to add an ID node. So add ID node, there we go. However, to make a bit more sense of it, I need to increase the ID count to 15. And as before, they're out of order, so I just need to go back to my repro node and move that. There we go. We can see that we need to adjust the antennas so that they attach to the top of the building. So I'm just going to unhide my antenna geometry and just select on the vertexes so I can see everything. The great thing about using this method is that we can see everything update in our repro mesh at the same time. I might just move those over a little bit. That's good. And maybe just 
move those top ones down. Oh, that's better. We can see that our building is raised from the ground. We can use the transform node just to get us back down. Oh, and we just need to go a little bit lower, so minus 0 0.5. There we go. Don't worry about the fact that there is an antenna sticking out of the bottom of the building as it will be obscured in our final animation. I'm just going to switch back to object mode and control H to hide that. That's great. As with the road, we can use an offset node with a fall off to animate the tower appearing. So let's select our mash node in our mash editor, add an offset node. We're just going to create a new fall off again by right clicking and create. Move our tower offset to the center and in the attribute editor of our offset node, set the Y position to minus 15 and go. Offset rotation in Y to 10 degrees and the offset scale values to minus one. Just need to increase the scale of our follow. Just select our scale attributes, middle mouse button up to 35 say. And let's, in our attribute editor, just select our, select, make sure we've got our falloff selected. And in the attribute editor, just select invert falloff so that we can see our tower. Okay, so we're just going to animate this now. So I'm going to move us to frame 30, back in the channel box of our falloff. And I'm going to move our falloff to below the landscape. Right click and key selected. Just zoom out a bit so I can see what I'm doing. And then move to frame 60. There we go. And again, key selected. So now we have our terror appearing. And play it back again, just a bit more zoomed in. Might just change the amount of our offset in our Y. So we get a bit more. That's a great thing about procedural modeling. You can go back in and change it whenever you want. And the MASH system really gives brilliant feedback due to the power of hardware renderer 2.0 and all the various behind the scenes optimizations that the team of Autodesk have done. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Again, still a bit jerky, so let's just add a spring node, just to give us a bit of life. Ah, oh, that's much better. Yeah, very pleased with that. Okay, great. The only thing we need to fix is the fact that at the beginning of the animation, our repro mesh is showing under the building. So it's dead easy, again with mesh. Let's just add a visibility node and create a fall off. I'm going to select the fall off, switch it to a cube, increase my inner zone to about 0.9 and then just move it slightly under our scene. Just check invert fall off and now hopefully There we go. Might just be a slight issue with that inner zone, so I'll just reduce that a little bit. There we go. Great. 